Hi, it's Kelly and welcome back to Me More. I'm really excited to have Leslie back in my kitchen. We are shooting another video of Paleo with Pros. But this one's got a little bit of a twist because um, we are actually doing a, what's the meal? Poke. Poke, which is one of the meals that Leslie prepared for Alicia Vikander on the set of um, Tomb Raider. Yep. Just tell me about that. How is it to be a chef on set? Um... <laughs> Being on on film uh, on a film set is is you know lots of hurry up and wait. It's pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have my own little uh, kitchen trailer. So you know, I know I'm really curious as to what Alicia would eat in a day. We'd start the day off with three eggs poached or fried, um, and a uh, very small amount of fruit. Literally five cherries or five raspberries, and then the rest of her meal plan was made up of lean protein derived from fish mostly. Uh, salmon and tuna because they're just so hearty and 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 uh, robust mm. uh, flavors and taste a typical meal would constitute 120 grams raw weight of the fish the lean protein 50 grams of a complex carbohydrate like basmati rice um whole wheat you know that with, with, with um, the brown Spelt, basmati yeah. um or uh spilt which is which is great nice and chewy um feels it feels like you're eating more because it's making you work harder to chew it so so anything complex you describe food, <laughs> half an avocado with with that and lots of good green veg vegetables things like uh obviously lettuce lettuce leaves shaved carrots so uh, raw carrots but not too not too much of that uh, we stayed away from from most root vegetables mm -hmm. uh, loads of tomatoes mm -hmm. um asparagus uh, courgettes, cucumbers, mushrooms. Mushrooms are great mm. uh, and so versatile as well. And then I use lots of fresh herbs and spices just to to make everything taste good and, and keep it interesting. That's the thing yes. about being on a on a on a, a, a very strict diet. You got to keep it interesting. And she would have a, a morning snack and an afternoon mm, snack. Mm, mm. And what were the snacks? That was generally speaking also fish. Uh, um, smoked mackerel, smoked fish, smoked mm. mackerel, salmon, and I even found smoked tuna, which is delicious. Mm. But smoked fish uh, has a quite a bit of salt in it, so in, a portion is not 120 grams. You go down to about 90 grams. And how long were you on set? How long did you did she have this? So food plan? we shot from January to May. Wow. So it was a long shoot, uh, quite intensive. Um, uh, but of course, because she was uh, under the supervision of a, of a trainer, um, he was slightly changing the, the, the amounts of food she was eating depending on what she needed. You know, everybody's different. Um, our weight fluctuates, our energy levels fluctuate, so he would very carefully monitor what she was eating. Sometimes we added nuts. Not a lot to all, and at one stage we took away the um, avocado. It wow, again, it's so intense. Yeah. You know. But remember, she is an actress, and it was for a role. <laughs> you know, it's a, it was her job yeah. too. Yeah. Was she training five days, six days, seven days? Yeah, yeah, seven days a week, every day on set. How well, I don't know hours? about seven days. Definitely five. We we had a five day week, so we didn't yeah. have to usually shoot on a yeah. on a weekend. It's just not realistic, but it is if it's your job. Okay, let's get started with the... Yeah, let's go. Poke. Poke. We're making tuna poke. Tuna. Tuna poke. Basically, tuna poke is is a Hawaiian dish. You can use uh, salmon if yep. you prefer. Um, and it's like a, a, a ceviche, but we're not going to put in raw onions. Okay. I'm not a fan of a ceviche because of that, but that's just a personal, personal taste. Mm -hmm. This is going to have lime... And that's what's going to cook the meat, if you will. The acidity of the lime juice is, is what makes the meat more palatable. And of course, we've got all the other ingredients, which we'll go through now in making a marinade. We throw it over the, the fish and it's really literally good to go, good to it, eat. It doesn't need to marinate for overnight, no, an hour, no, nothing. No. You want Just it fresh and, 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 and it's quick and fresh and you can make a lot or a little, depending okay. on how many people you have. What I want you to know about when you get fish, try and get... Go to a fishmonger. This is sushi grade tuna. Ask for sushi grade uh, what does that tuna mean? or salmon. Basically, they've trimmed it. It's not so not too sinewy. There's more mm -hmm. meat than it is sinew. Yeah, and ask them to chop it a cubit for you as well. Simply because most of us don't have knives that are lovely and sharp as a mm -hmm. sushi chef or mm -hmm. a fishmonger would be. Um, and the less you handle it, 
the better. You don't want to be messing about with it, handling it too much. And do you wash it? After no, you get it. no, 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 because no? it should be fine to go. You also want to have that little taste of the sea. Again, mm -hmm. don't mess with it too much. Okay. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's. But it's, I just, I think raw fish, uh, you know, that's where people get sick and, oh, you know, <clears> blur a little bit. But if it's coming straight from your, from your fishmonger and it's on ice, you know. It should be fine. Yeah, and, and it's worthwhile, you know, if you're going to your, your local fishmonger and uh, taking a cooler bag and ask them to put it on ice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good tip. The poke we're doing is two portions today. Yes. This is 250 grams of, of tuna, raw weight. Raw okay. Weight. So what does that mean, raw weight? Raw weight, if, when, once you've cooked food, the weight changes. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it loses moisture or it gains moisture depending on what kind of, what, you, what you're cooking. So mm -hmm. things like grains, if you, if you cook those, those absorb water. Yes. Meats, um, fish, proteins will usually... Uh, um, release water so you you're cooking it at raw weight so it's a, a portion size for an individual is, would be 125 120 125 raw weight that's about a fist size <laughs> and that's what you want to be aiming for on on a plate of food you want to go for a fistful of protein a fistful of, of carb and you know two really good veggies that's generally the what balance. you that ba ba balance what you're looking at. Obviously, if you're on a paleo diet, it's it's you it's can different. You just don't do this. I think this is the the people the misconception with paleo. It's like you don't do carbs. We do carbs. We just do good carbs. You know? <laughs> so I can still do a fistful of carbs. <laughs> paleo carbs. But also, your fist is corresponding to about the size of your stomach. Oh. So if you don't be thrown. I mean, it's good to have a scale so you can understand how much food. Mm. Uh, what what mass looks looks like if you will if you want to visualize it but uh, rule of thumb is your fist that's okay. how much you need to be eating in a in, in a meal we are going to be using um, sesame oil in this in this recipe uh, but not excesses of amounts and sesame oil is great because it's so flav flavorful it's toasted sesame so even more so it has that distinctive toasted yummy umami taste okay so more mm. sort of Asian yeah yeah so you wouldn't use coconut oil no, 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 total, no. Yeah. total, totally different kind of, of flavor. I'm going to give you an indication of how much um, of measurements, tablespoon measurements that I'm using. But again, uh, always taste your food because you might want it saltier, sweeter, more acidic, depending on where your taste lies. So it's, it's, it's always good to keep on tasting. I know. You've taught me that. You have taught me that. <laughs> so I'm going to start with tablespoon of sesame oil you can and smell, I know you smell that yeah oh it is yeah it's yeah. really toasty toasty mm. Mm. we're using tamari soya sauce which is low salt the, uh, so it's different to normal normal soya sauce so if you if you're con if you're concerned about your salt intake tamari is the way to go and is it that's gluten free as well yes yeah i'm going to put in a bit of chinese chinese vinegar this mm -hmm. is rice vinegar so it's slightly <laughs> rice vinegar. <laughs> it's all right. It's not gonna kill me, is it? <laughs> no. A splash of fish sauce. Fish sauce gives it's... it a salty, mm, salty. I just never know how to use that properly. Sparingly, because yes. it's so. Uh, it, it gives the umami salty taste, mm. uh, but it's very. It, you can overdo it. it, yes. it, it and it, it, and then it just. You, there's no ways to take, take it out. out. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of. Uh, hot chili sauce oh. again use this to taste it's not it's not that hot so I'm gonna put in about half a tablespoon there are so many different kinds of chili sauces chai this chili sauces sweet one, eh? yeah just be you know if you if you're very sensitive about uh, about ingredients read a list of ingredients on it and be careful that you're not getting one with too much um, sugar yes a lot of sauces have a lot of sugar in them, mm -hmm. to basically to preserve them and to stabilize them, but also just for the sweet. I mean, that's why kids love ketchup. Yes. They're it's after sugar. <laughs> it's pure sugar. Pure and sugar. then limes, mm. lime juice. Could use lemon, but lime is what we're going for. Would and you make all this fresh on set? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I and had a have very to buy the ingredients every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had a delightful fishmonger who who helped me out. And now I've got just under a tablespoon of ginger. So it's just grated with the skin grated. on. Yeah, I always grate ginger with the skin on. I'm lazy. <laughs> 
But really, I mean... I if thought it was something to do with the technique. No, no. I mean, it tastes like the rest of the root. And okay. it's clean, if it's clean and it's got all the sand off it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we're just whisking it. Okay. And this is where... The taste test. We taste it to... Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, you shouldn't have said mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is... Just put it in, and I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's it, it doesn't, you know, this is really good quality tuna. It doesn't need to be sitting in there for ages, mm. marinating. You don't really want that. What I've done is, got so a, what are you gonna put it? Got on? to put it into onto a platter. Mm -hmm. Which has what? What's on there? This is just. Um, a bit of lettuce and and coriander. The coriander pairs perfectly with this. Mm. And you could pair it with any kind of good green veggies, broccoli, asparagus, cucumber. Mm -hmm. And then you can add fruits, eat fruits with it, like mango, Ooh, which nice. goes really, yeah. really, mango, avocado, and, co and, mm. and poke is just delicious, Ooh. delicious combination. This is what I would call a really good low fat, um, lean protein. We've only really used less than half a half less than a tablespoon of sesame oil yeah um so there's you know, nothing in it is it really no so good poke is often eaten with rice mm -hmm. in which case they would um <laughs> <laughs> it would it would absorb the the um the, the liquid yeah um yeah. and if you go to restaurants i mean you, I've, I've been to to poke cafes and places and I mean they, they serve these enormous bowls of rice and fish and it's just it's just it's too much it's just well, too what much about, just in my head I'm going god I would love this would what if I had raw cauliflower rice under it cauliflower no Gina. I don't think cauliflower complements it okay. it's it's possibly if you if you steam the cauliflower but I think cauliflower is better with things like chicken and cooked yes. meats Okay. Um, this is because the flavors are quite sharp. Yes. Um, you want something to complement it. Yeah. Although the creaminess of an avocado pairs really, mm, really, really mm. well. Um, and the sweetness of the mango. Then I've got nori sprinkles. Okay. This is seaweed. Now you got that in a packet. You haven't chopped up your own there. No. So just, you can do it. You can just get some nice, you know, we, we try to use as much organic produce as possible. Yeah. So nori sprinkles on there. And then to finish it off, toasted sesame seeds. Oh, nice. There you go. It's pretty. Now again, um, you know, if you wanted to add more color, you could add, and if you like the, the taste of it, you could add chilies, fresh chilies, if that was your thing. Just sort of yeah. on top of that. Yeah. Okay, this looks delicious. Can't wait to, um, to taste it. So pretty much, you know, because people are interested about, you know, you and being a chef and being working on set and working with the latest Tomb Raider, her meal program was really quite strict that you did and her training was quite intense, mm -hmm. but it's not realistic. Was it? No, and it was also done under the supervision of a nutritionist trainer. I would recommend to anybody who wants to get that sort of physique, well, you know, restricting calories, is to do it under the supervision of a trainer. Absolutely, a nutritionist. Um, or a nutritionist, a doctor. This is 250 grams of tuna, which translates to approximately 250 to 300 calories. It's enough for two people for a standard meal. Yeah, this is yeah. low cal. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me here on Paleo with Pros. You are our seems to be our in-house professional chef which i love can't wait to taste this tuna poke if you've enjoyed this video don't forget i make lots of other videos on paleo some great paleo recipes beauty lifestyle and you can follow me at memore.tv felt like poke but you okay. say poke okay <laughs> poke tuna poke